All right, so today's online lesson, uh, we're going to be looking at polynomial functions. So I know we've been talking a lot about different kinds of functions, square root, cube root, uh, quadratic, cubics, absolute value, trigonometric. So uh, for the last part of this unit, we're going to be looking at just polynomial functions, meaning they have many terms. Uh, and by many terms, meaning x exists more than once, but it has different um, values, such as x to the fifth, x to the third, x to the first power, things like that. So, all, so this is a great example of polynomial. f of x equals x to the fifth minus 3x to the third plus x minus 2. Okay? So x to the fifth. Okay, let's take a look here. So whenever we're talking about n behavior, we always want to look to the highest variable or the uh, variable with the highest exponent. So x to the fifth is the biggest. So x to the third is next big, and then x to the first is the smallest of all the variables. So when I look at this, I want to look for the highest variable, which I found there. Okay, And <clears throat> I'm specifically looking at the exponent that's there, so to the fifth power. All right? And there's something I need to know about this. Uh, first thing is that it's an odd number, right? Five is odd, like one, three, five, seven, nine. Those are all odd numbers, and two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Those are all even numbers. Okay? So there's something to be said about even and odd exponents. Okay? So, for example, let's, let me give you a little easier function here. What if I said f of x equals 2x plus 3. Hopefully you'd say, Mr. Schwant, I recognize that this is a linear graph, right? A linear function, right? It makes a graph. So up 3, okay, is my y-intercept, and then I follow my slope up 2 over 1, and my line would look something like this, okay? Right, I'm not concerned about if you know how to graph a linear function, but what I do want you to notice is the exponent on x, right? It's the only x in the problem, but it's an invisible 1. And, of course, 1 is an odd number, okay? And notice for an odd-numbered function, notice how the ends are going in different directions, right? They're pointing in opposite directions, or odd-posite directions. Ah, get that, see? Okay? So for odd functions, they're actually going to point in opposite directions. Let me give you another example of an odd function here. Okay, so negative x cubed plus 5. Okay, from your knowledge, of course, of vertical shifts and stuff, you know it's a cubic graph. Normally, it starts from down here and goes up here. But you'll notice the negative in front, so it's actually going to start from up and then go down. So that's what it's going to look like, okay? But you'll also notice, okay, that in this graph, uh, it's a plus 5, so that means it's going to remove it up 5 if we really wanted to. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this graph we know would look something like this. But here's what I want you to notice. See how the ends are going in opposite directions? One's going up, one's going down. So, and that is because the, of the 3. The 3, the highest exponent in the function, is dictating where the ends are going. So if it's odd, it's going to go in different directions. Okay? And just for another example, let me give, put this up here. So if I put g of x equals negative 3, x plus 2 squared plus 1. Okay? Hopefully you realize this is a quadratic function. Okay? And if it's quadratic, okay, uh, first I need to notice that, again, it's going to be a shift. It's going to go to the left 2, up 1. The negative 3 means it's going to face down. It's going to go uh, sharply down like this. But here's what I want you to notice. Do you see that the ends are going the same direction? See how both ends are going in the same direction, both going down? Okay? And that is because the highest exponent is a 2, meaning it's an even function. And if it's an even function, the ends go in the same direction. Okay? So, here's what we're going to do. Okay? So, this is kind of give you a rough sketch of what we're going with. So, now let's take a look at my uh, original equation that we're over here. x to the fifth minus 3x cubed plus x minus 2. Okay? So, I'm looking at this, and I recognize, okay, the highest exponent is x to the fifth, and the fifth power is an odd function. 
Okay, so I know that the ends are going to go in opposite directions, something like this, right? Now, depending on what the exponent is, okay, uh, we're going to talk about this in class, uh, it depends on how many humps the graph has or how many twists and turns it has, we'll talk about that in class, but I just want you to recognize that it's odd and that it goes in different directions, okay? And notice how there's no negative in front, okay, there's no negative, meaning it starts from down and then goes up. And if we have to describe the end behavior, there's a specific way to do that, okay? So what we say is, as f of x approaches infinity, okay? And now f of x is just fancy way of saying y, okay? So as y approaches infinity, meaning as the graph continues to go up, what about the x value? What's happening to the x value? Well, x is also approaching infinity, Right? Because as x is go as f y is going up, x is also going out. Okay? So as f of x approaches infinity, x approaches infinity. And for this, as f of x approaches negative infinity, okay, meaning my graph is now going this way. Okay, that means x is also going outwards. Okay. So x is approaching negative infinity. All right. So what? I, so the first thing we need to recognize is the exponent. The highest exponent is odd, so that means the ends are going in different directions. Okay. And then I just do kind of like just a, like I, if I know the ends are going. So I know it's like, you're, but it's a line. I'm really confused. Let me do it this way. So no matter what happens in the middle, even if it does this, literally if it does something like this. I know that my ends are going to do something like that, right? One of them is going to be facing down, one of them is going to be facing up. And because there's no negative in front, it starts from the bottom and then works its way up to the top. Okay? So that is what an odd function does. And that, for this particular fun polynomial function, as f of x approaches infinity, x approaches infinity. And as f of x approaches negative infinity, x approaches negative infinity. Okay? So let's go ahead and try another problem here. All right, so I notice here it's x to the fourth minus 3x squared minus 3x. So I look here because that's where my highest variable is. And I notice that the highest exponent is a 4, meaning it's an even function. Okay? So, again, my graph can do a whole bunch of things here in the middle. Blah, 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 blah. But I know at the, the end of it, both ends are going to go to the same direction because it's an even function. Both ends will be facing up. But let's say there was a negative in front. That means both ends would be facing down. But since it's a positive x to the fourth, both ends are going up. So now we write our statement as f of x approaches infinity, meaning as y keeps going up, what is the x value doing? Well, the x value is also increasing, meaning it's going towards positive infinity. Okay, well, here's where an even function gets a little tricky. So as f of x approaches negative infinity, meaning... As the left side of the graph is going upwards, what about the x value? Okay? The x value is also approaching negative infinity. Okay? So the graph approaches positive infinity, the x approaches positive infinity, and as f of x approaches. Sorry, technical difficulty there. Let's try this again. So, let's talk about. As f of x, let's actually start with x this time. It makes it a little easier if we talk about x. Just like how when we do interval notation. So, as x approaches infinity, meaning as my graph is going outwards this way, what's my graph doing? That means it's going up. So, f of x is also approaching infinity. Okay. Now, let's talk about as x goes towards negative infinity meaning as my graph goes this direction to the left, the graph is also going up. So f of x is still approaching positive infinity. Okay? So always start with x first. I know like on some of the multiple choice questions, it might talk about f of x first. But always start with x first, just like with intervals, right? As x approaches this, what's, uh, what's the y value doing? Okay? So always talk about the x value first. Okay? So as x approaches infinity, what's y doing? As x approaches negative infinity, what's y doing? 
Okay, and then finally, let's end with number Let's end it off with this right here. So I look to my uh, polynomial function. I recognize that x to the third is my highest variable. I also recognize that 3 is my highest exponent, meaning this is an odd function. So no matter what this graph looks like, even though we know it's a cubic graph, so it's going to look something like this, right? Uh, and again, we're going to talk about what the 7x squared means and the 16x means, okay? But generally, it's going to look something like this, and the ends are going in different or odd opposite directions. <laughs> okay, so they're going in opposite directions. So let's go ahead and talk about, as x approaches, we'll do negative infinity first, meaning as my graph is going to the left, that direction, what is the actual graph doing? It's going down, so that means f of x is approaching negative infinity as well. It's going down, okay? So as x approaches positive infinity, meaning as my graph continues to go to the right, what happens? It's going to actually go head upwards. So that means f of x is approaching positive infinity, okay? So always start with x first. It kind of helps you see as x goes to the right what's happening to the f of x, meaning the y value, because that's what we're wanting to find out there. Okay? So I hope this video helps. Go back and try to watch that if you need some extra help, and hopefully you're able to do the online quiz well.